how a steady stream of Nigerians have continued to make their way out of the country in search of proverbial greener pasture. This Max Exodus continued to unfold regardless of living conditions in whatever foreign jurisdictions these Nigerians are headed. For each and every one of them, the objective remains the same, to escape the rapidly worsening socio-economic and political circumstances in their country of origin. Now, joining us to look at this matter in close details is Bumi Lawson, the CEO MD, FE Microfinance Bank. We want to say welcome to Newsday. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Um, it's even been given a term here in Nigeria. Yes. The Jackpot Jack Syndrome. Bar. Yeah. And you look at that. For people that is still, it's, for some people, it's still a dream to live outside Nigeria. But in reality, some would say that the best you can ever be is a middle class individual. If you travel abroad, that, um, that particular myth of probably finding a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is just an illusion. That you're almost trading one suffering for another or one lead for another. For you, you've seen this has happened. I'm sure several people have come to the bank to solicit for loans to travel abroad. What's your perspective on this? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the Jackpot Syndrome is an interesting one because it's both good and bad. Hmm. Some people actually want to travel, yes, as you said, for greener pastures, but also to assess quality education, quality work environments, quality standards of living. And one of the things we have found is that Jaqua is good, that is going abroad, if you eventually intend to come back. So not everybody goes with the intention that, oh, I've given up on Nigeria and that is the end. And as you will see, a lot of Nigerians actually come back and actually excel in Nigeria and add value to what they're doing. Um, I was watching your program, I mean, Arise TV all through today, okay. and I was looking at all the people that you interviewed most of them had actually studied abroad, but then come back. Some of them studied, some worked, then come back to Nigeria and have established, you know, great organizations. We, my bank, did a study of the top um, quoted companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We looked at their executive management and then other leading companies. And 65% of them had at one point or the other either gone for abroad for a master's or had lived abroad or worked abroad before coming back. So there is value to going abroad. What is not good, the bad part, is where people just go at all costs. You know, you hear of people go to Libya on the ship and they're dying and, you know, that really, and you're staying there illegally. So that's where I feel that this rainbow that they're looking for, the pots, the gold pot on that rainbow, they're looking for that they would not get because you're going illegally. So have a plan of action, you know. So we are particular about making sure that people have access to, you know, quality education, wherever you want to have it. So that's, I think, is important, especially if you have the intention of coming back. Yes, yeah, you're talking about the intention of coming back. Yes. Uh, countries like the UK have had influx of immigrants over uh, yes. time, uh, especially Nigerians as well for decades. Uh, we're losing qualified professional on a daily basis. Now, but they are beginning to grumble themselves that the influx of these people coming in, especially when it comes to medical tourism and uh, what have you, mm -hmm. and uh, not having enough reasons to, uh, to go. And uh, of course, educationally as well, we have scenarios whereby dependence uh, has been said that a, uh, at one, uh, you know, a survey that uh, Nigerians are, are more or less the, are the highest. Family, yes. So when you have scenarios like that, how would you assess uh, our own perspective on that? Yeah. So, you know, that coming back I was talking about, mm -hmm. one has to make sure that the social economic environment that you want to come back to actually is attractive. So that is really the onus of this issue. You know, people are going with their families, um, our medical um, professionals are living in the droves. You know, we are worried about the state of the medical, um, you know, facilities available to Nigerian citizens. And, you know, that really is worrying. But 
What I feel government needs to do is to improve the social economic environment, issues of security, infrastructure, a lot of all those things need to be done so that not only does it now discourage those who will want to go illegally, mm. but that those who have gone would actually want to come back. So if you look at medi med the medical, you would notice that there are lots of now, especially in Lagos, yes. international hospitals being built. It, and most of the time, you find that it's the Nigerian doctors who have gone, who are now building and bringing back those facilities. And maybe, yes, as of now, it's only maybe the high-end Nigerians mm. who can afford their services. But I feel that even doctors who now have to learn on that dam and inter can now bring those facilities and knowledge that we've not had access to, mm. to people generally. Mm. So, you know, immigration on its own is not bad. Is that... What are the conditions in the country that would encourage people to come back and reinvest um, back in Nigeria? That is the issue. I'm sorry, Ira, okay. but over this, over time, has the governments, not government, governments over time have been proactive in encouraging them to come back? Yes, you hear about diaspora fundings and stuff like mm -hmm. that, repatriation and stuff, but uh, over time, uh, you know, the issue of uh, people leaving from here to there and uh, not coming back seems to be the order of the day. Yes, so that's because of the worsening economic um, situation, you know, this issue of security and I would say basic access to, you know, average living standards. That's, you know, it's really tough. So it's tough for you to hear, I mean, people um, being re um, said, I mean, like the American embassy where they said they should leave yes, Nigeria and all of yeah. that, and then yeah. you are heading back. Yeah. So. You know, so those are the things I feel that government needs to address. And you will see that even in some countries, for instance, I would take the Chinese, they actually have scholarships and things to encourage people to go actually go study abroad, but to bring you back. So those are some of the things I feel that even the Nigerian government should do. I know some state governments actually had a scholarship scheme where they were doing that. But, you know, it was also fraught with they didn't pay school fees and things like that. But... You know, um, the issue really is that we need to improve Nigeria so that people can come back, mm. even if they still continue to go out. Yes. All right. So, um, you've you've just hit the nail on the head by you saying that things need to improve. Mm. But we see more people because you've been speaking and happy at the fact that the best way to do it is to go there and come, come back. back. But when you take a survey especially when you listen to what people are saying, the communication on social media. It is the thought of going and never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at that, and it goes back to my question I, I asked. If you were to advise people, because some are saying that you're trading a middle class, maybe a lower middle class, or a higher middle class, mm. so to speak. Yes. That there is so much you can be able to achieve mm -hmm. in your career. There is a level you can get to being an immigrant. Mm -hmm. If you were to um, advise people that are planning to leave, that are defiant, mm -hmm. that they must leave, what advice would you be giving to them? So uh, it depends on what they're going for. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're going legally... A lot of people are just leaving for the sake of leaving, like we've said. No, yeah, they've so looked if you at, want to see... They've looked at 2022. Yes. Some are already projecting that... Yeah, going to they, be, they, might, yeah. they might be... There might be violence, Arrest. and they're just trying to run away from that. Mm -hmm. Not having, you know, they're not thinking 14, 14 yes. months, 18 yes. months, 23 months down the line. Yeah. Just thinking about leaving, I can gather money together mm -hmm. and leave. That's yes. all I want to do. <laughs> That's, we'll figure yes. it as it goes. Yes. So, but you don't want people jumping from frying pan to mm. fire. That's my point. Mm. Because if you leave at all costs and you leave illegally, you are not going to find that El Dorado that you are going to seek abroad. So I would advise people to actually plan an exit. You can't just um, say, oh, I, I want to go at all costs anywhere I see I'm yeah. going. What are you going for? Are you going to be able to build your career? Are you going to be able to get access to education? Let me say, you talked about people who are at the, say, lower middle class, trading it for upper middle class. What actually happens is if you are able to get to that upper middle class professionally or through education and you come back to Nigeria, mm. in fact, well, at least in my own time, when you come back, they just automatically make you even more senior managers yes. and give you better roles just because you've had exposure abroad. So, you know, in a way, it's more attractive because it gives people who may not even have opportunity at all mm. that access as well. Because that's one of the key things that people who are at the bottom of the pyramid, low income, may not have access 
to all these things, the good jobs, who do they know in the bank or in no telco, wherever they want to work. Typically, the number of applications are so high. But if you have this ability to go abroad, get a, um, exposure, whether working or school, by the time you're applying, you will be one of the few that have come back and then you'll be able to get a good job. So that's why it's still attractive and people will want to go. Mm. So I would tell you, I went, I came back, and you know, I'm running a bank now. And yeah. we are encouraging others, you know, through our loans to be able to get people to go legally so that they have increased skills, knowledge, competence, but encourage them to come back mm. and work and establish organizations that is really needed in Nigeria. Mm. If you look at India today, I'm sure you've seen all these messages they pass around on WhatsApp. CEO of Google, this, 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 this India, 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 India. Yeah. Well, they were not in diaspora. You won't have that. Mm -hmm. But they come back to India and see what's happened in India. That's what I feel we need to do. So government is almost like, yes, people are heading out now. Mm -hmm. Can government put in place initiatives that would then be attractive so that in five um, years' time, what we'll be talking about is returnees yes. and not Jaqua. So that's... Mm -hmm. The, that's the key issue that we should address. Very good. But uh, what is this scenario, this perspective having uh, in terms of uh, the impact on the most productive segment of society on the long term? Okay, fine. Especially those that don't have the intention of coming back. Mm. We're losing them, you know, just like we're churning them out of uh, universities and everything. Well, with the strikes and all that. So yes. it's a grim and bleak uh, scenario. But what impact is that having on us as a country to have uh, professionals? Yes, so, I mean, the, I would just say the medical industry is one key example. And if you look at that, really the shortages are affecting Nigerians, you know, especially, you know, when you look at the larger um, population. So government needs to ha come in with an intervention. Um, look at what happened with the acid strike. Um, lecturers, are they being paid well? Are medical um, professionals, are they being paid well? What is the environment that they're living in? So that we don't lose it. And then also even the schools, make sure we can churn out you know, an adequate number. So we can't say, let's say the country needs a million doctors. Mm -hmm. You don't just produce a million, produce two million, because some people will go. It's basic human rights for you to decide where you want to stay legally. Yes. But I think we need to produce more than our requirements. Because Nigerians go out and become very successful. Nigerians, even with our 200 plus, um, 200 million plus population yes. now, you know, there's enough for everyone, whether you want to go out or stay in. The other thing I would say was I was actually looking at the numbers of Nigerians in diaspora. So um, UK did a census, both legal and illegal, mm -hmm. you know, and really they are not even up to two, two million Nigerians there. So in total, I looked at UK, US, um, China, India, it's amazing some places where you see Nigerians, but it's still less than 5% of the entire Nigerian population. Mm. So we can't, if only 5% are living and the country is shaking, then fundamentally there's something else wrong. We are not producing enough professionals. We are not training them adequately. So you can see what's happening to our investors. Their education system is actually poor. From primary, you have graduates who come out. They can't read and write. Mm. You know? so, but despite all that, they then go abroad, have access to education, and excel. Because you know, most of the time, you, when you go to any sector abroad, you will find one Nigerian in the top. So, and yet some of them would have gone through at least our same Nigerian universities that we say is not good. It's because in Nigeria we may not be training them, giving them the appropriate knowledge and skills, but once they have access to that, they then excel. So but we need to look at that foundation. As an employer of labor, yes. let's try to help on that. As an employer of labor, sometimes do you think that discrimination actually happens? That's just the perception that this man or this woman has schooled abroad gives this person a leg up above them, that if you put them to task, basically, without looking at any of them and just saying that, okay, this one came from abroad, why well, you just put them to task, that's probably maybe one that was trained here in Nigeria could outsmart and outclass that one that came from the UK. But the fact that people and employers of labor always still look at the fact that you've studied abroad means that 
whatever you've studied is more superior than one that studied here in Nigeria? Well, yes, there's that bias. But I would say that most employers of labor typically do a test. You know, so before you come in, there's the interview process, there's a test. And part of what you learn when you school abroad, and I think some schools here, mm. is that training on how to um, write your CV, your interview, your writing skill, diction, and all of that. Yes. So the tendency is that people who schooled abroad would be able to ace those mm. tests better than those who, what in, in school maybe is not as practical, is not linked to the work environment. So therefore, they have not had the opportunity to do those tests, the interviews, and so on and so forth, because that's what I've seen. But you know, it's true that what you're saying, that sometimes you find this unique Nigerian who comes in, you give them a, you know, um, room to excel in the workplace, and they just really outshine. The thing I would say is the method of our education. Mm -hmm. Typically, when you look at Nigerian education, generally, you're just cramming. You know, so they give you A, B, C, D, you just repeat A, B, C, D. So the skills. But, yes, mm. so, but there you're thinking, teaching people how to learn, so that because everything keeps changing, and then you're thinking about how to think. Critical thinking. So, yes, critical yeah. thinking. So mm. that's, those are skills, especially now in the 21st century, that employers are looking for. And so our curriculum in schools, right from primary school, need to add those as we are training our, our students. So those are the, that's the difference. Uh, all right, just say. briefly and uh, finally, if I, just before I let you go, uh, Madam, um, you have scenarios. You've been in the financial sector for some time now, but you even find scenarios you'd expect people that are well, probably well taken care of in terms of mm -hmm. uh, uh, monuments and uh, remunerations, as it were, in the finance industry. You know, people still have brain drain scenarios. People live in banks, you know, for not just, you know, to uh, greener pastures, but uh, to other things they just don't feel uh, satisfied, uh, you know, it doesn't yeah. offer that satisfaction. So how would you uh, react to that? Um, so, mm. yeah. So people still leave their current jobs, basically yeah. because they feel that they have wider choice mm -hmm. in other areas and not just um, that job. You understand? So um, I know a lot of people who, their parents will say, oh, you must be a doctor mm. or um, a lawyer. Whereas when you go abroad, even with your degree in law, the opportunities are bound. And so maybe that's not what they want to do. And it's not only just career. It's, again, living environment. You understand the access to water. Do you have yeah. water in your house? Electricity, safety, all of those other things. Especially yeah. even school. But your children, mm -hmm. you are sometimes concerned, ah, what schools would I now send them to? Whereas if you go abroad and you go legally, some of those things are even free. If you go to Canada, all the way to university may be free for your children that you are still wondering, how do I pay school fees here? So those are some of the reasons why um, people mm -hmm. would go abroad. Okay. Um, well, I want to say many thanks to you, Bobby Lawson, for your time here and helping us actually make sense and also give perspective to this, what people were calling Jaguar syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much for having me here. You know, and if anybody needs service, they should come to our bank. <laughs> 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 All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.